So happy new year, everybody. <laughs> An arbitrary date fixed by a Pope 700 years ago or something. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Why don't they just use the winter solstice? I mean, the, the Tamil calendar uses the spring equinox, which I think is very important uh, in the cycle of the year. But still, that's external, and we're interested in the internal, isn't it? So this is the final secret. I've been talking about all this stuff for years now, <laughs> and nobody's guessed it. Even after my series on apophatic anti-fragility. And what was that, three years ago? And still nobody has guessed it. Well, anything that you experience is not enlightenment. Enlightenment is fully realizing being the experiencer. You can't see yourself. You can only be yourself. Because there's no second self to see. <laughs> I mean, how are you going to... If you are yourself, you can't see yourself. Oh, yeah, you can see some distorted reflections in the mind and in the world. If you follow the path of sadhana, there's a series of experiences. Huh? The Buddha calls them jhanas. The Vedas call them the path of yoga. Karma yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, jnana yoga. But what are they? They're experiences. They're something outside yourself, something different from yourself. Otherwise, you couldn't experience it. And this very division of being and experience, of awareness and consciousness. So consciousness is always of something, even if it's only your own mind. Try to understand. From our point of view, the mind is also external. Something outside the self. Because why? The self is aware of the mind, or actually the thoughts. There really is no mind. There's only thoughts. Thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. And th so to be aware of those thoughts, one has to be different from them. In fact, to be aware of anything. You have to be different from it. So the only thing you can be aware of that you're not different from is yourself. This I, I, the awareness of the self without going outside, this is enlightenment. So in the beginning of yoga, you have yama niyama, which nobody follows. <laughs> Before asana, and especially before pranayama, you have to have yama niyama. It's the eight stages of yoga. Yama niyama asana pranayama. What is yama is what is to be done. And niyama is what must not be done. And what is the very first item of yama? To accept a guru. And nobody accepts a guru anymore because the level of trust in society is going right down the toilet. So they're screwed. If you don't get step 1A right, how can you expect to get step 8Z? Blows my mind. Anyway, Yama niyama. Yama means accept a guru and follow his instructions. Okay? And niyama is whatever he tells you not to do. <laughs> then asana. Then you can prepare your seat, your sitting posture. Then pranayama. 
slow the breath, still the mind. Because why? The next stage? Pratyahara. Withdrawal of the mind from the senses. Disconnecting from the world. The ego. The mind. See, the ego requires externals. I am this body. I am these designations. I am these activities, these possessions, these uh, mental structures of how I think the universe is. And all of that is external to you. Uh, all of that is simply something you experience. So it can't be enlightenment. But it's a step on the path. Pratyahara. Now you, now you know that. So you withdraw the awareness, withdraw the consciousness from who you think you are, <laughs> what you, thinkingness, hmm? beingness, doingness, havingness, which is the most important. Huh? Beingness. All that other stuff is external to you, the self, the being, uh, the one who meditates. <laughs> so, all right, we drop all this external stuff, pratyahara. Then what? Dharana. Dharana means to concentrate. Concentrate what? Awareness. Now, in the beginning, you have to have an object. But that object should become more and more and more subtle as you continue. So we may start with a deity, a form in a temple, a name, a mantra, a ritual, some practice or other. It doesn't matter. Different people enter through different doors. Actually, whatever you like can be the object in dharana. It's simply concentrating the mind. So find something you like and think about it. Dwell on it. Penetrate it deeply. Go to its essence. And you'll find concentrating the mind brings pleasure. The more you concentrate the mind and the longer you hold that concentration, the more pleasure it brings. So that solves that problem, right? <laughs> What comes next? Dhyana. Dhyana comes into Pali as jhana. So in the Buddhist teaching, there are eight jhanas, which is probably the clearest exposition of Raja Yoga that we have today. Because it was kept secret. Why? It was considered a weapon. If, if King A has Raja Yoga, huh? the ability to actually control the mind. And he has to fight King B, who, who doesn't know this, who's at the effect of his mind and senses. Well, King A has an advantage, doesn't he? He has a strategic advantage. And the culture that brings about that kind of strategic advance, advancement, yeah, has to have a, a core of advisors who are all enlightened. And if the king becomes enlightened, then, oh, Ram Rajya, huh? kingdom of God. But in these days, <laughs> don't bet on it. Huh? Don't hold your breath. <laughs> well, hold your breath, but I mean, not for that. <laughs> Pranayama naturally leads to Pratyahara. And Pratyahara naturally leads to Dharana, concentration of the mind. And Dharana automatically leads to Dhyana. And at first there will be content, the first jhana. There's still content. One is still thinking. But it's thinking along a specific line. 
usually a teaching, uh, some sutra or mantra. Gayatri mantra, I find to be the best. Or if you understand it, just Aum. Yeah. So going beyond that, going beyond thoughts, words and symbols, names and forms, you, you get to the higher jhanas, okay? And the higher you go, the more pleasure, the more ecstasy there is. Until finally you get to the immaterial jhanas. We've been over this before. Uh, infinite space, infinite consciousness, nothingness, and neither perception nor non-perception. That's, that's my favorite. <laughs> If you're in nothing, uh, if there's nothing to perceive, how do you know whether you're a percipient or not? So in the end, you come to the conclusion it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I'm percipient or not because all that stuff is simply experience. And what is experience? Anicca dukkha anatta. Huh? Asat, achit, nirananda. I'm sorry, nischit. Asat, nischit, nirananda. So that's what we don't want, right? <laughs> what we want is sat, chit, ananda. Not the experience, but the experiencer. Not the object, the subject. Who is experiencing? The one constant thing. You, you'll find when you go to fix your mind, huh? when you go to dharana, that these different objects are very slippery. Anything that's in the mind is going to be temporary because the mind is impermanent. Thoughts are like quicksilver. You just touch them and they, and they scatter. So that's not the object for samadhi. That won't bring you to steady, unwavering concentration. What object can? There's only one object that's always there. That's the self. That's you. Who is the experiencer? Who is witnessing all this stuff? Huh? Witness the witness. That's enlightenment. And, and just drop all this other stuff, huh? at least for some time. But you'll find that once you touch that beingness, it grows. And the more you invest in it, time and energy contemplating it, the more it will grow until it permeates everything. I mean, Ramana Maharshi is a good example. And he was completely aware of the internal state of all beings as, uh, around him, at least, maybe more, who were connected with him, I would say. So who can be like that, you know? One can be at least compassionate when he sees that others are suffering because they're just not getting it, you know? We can try to give something so that they can get it. Now, the best thing is if we just give tools and we don't talk about what the conclusion is uh, because then somebody will imitate if we talk about the conclusion, somebody will start, you know, walking around saying, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Probably had a cracker. That's not it. Social enlightenment does not exist. 
I'm out of time. Om Tat Sat. Om Harihi Aum.